Great. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's um, Canyons U is going to focus on Google Forms presentations. And no, not presentations, but just Google Forms. Um, when we're looking at Google Forms, here are the things that we are going to be focusing on today. So we're going to look at Google Forms. Let me change that really quickly. And we're going to check out the template gallery, different themes. We're going to look at um, the settings for general and for presentation. We're also going to look at how we can create question types, how we can create form sections. So that means that there's going to, if a person answers one way, it will send them to one section. If they answer a second way, it may send them to a second section. We are going to look at how we can share with participants. Those are the people who are going to be taking and using the form, um, filling it out, versus a collaborator, so someone who you are um, working with in building the form. We're going to look at how to maybe send pre-form or pre-fill responses, and we're also looking at how to do um, how to view those participant responses. So after someone's filled it out, what happens to the form? What do we do with it? So our success criteria today is that you will know you're successful when you can create, send, and view responses of a Google form. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you have to get to the Google Forms. You can do this by click, um, typing in forms.google.com, or you could also instead just go to your csvdocs.org, and then under New, you can go ahead and click on New, and you can go to Forms right here, and you can either choose a blank form, or you can do it from a template. So I'm going to show you what the templates look like really quickly. I'm not going to actually click into them, but I just wanted you to see what those forms are. Um, hi, Cindy. So hi. in the forms, um, when we look at them, you can do like a blank quiz. Quizzes are actually graded quizzes. Okay. Um, if you're like in a classroom, there's some for education, like exit tickets, assessments, etc. So if you were um, holding a meeting and maybe you want to do a quick form that, that to see if the participants that were in your meeting understood what you talked about, or maybe you just want a quick like, hey, tell me what you thought about blah, blah, blah. Okay, an exit ticket would be a really easy way to, to get those responses. And basically, I think I am going to click into it really quickly. Um, basically, it, uh, it builds the form for you, and then you can just go in and change anything that you want to change in it. Okay. So if I wanted to come here and I'd want it to be name, but I want it to be their first and last name, I could do first and last, and then um, and then that's going to quickly change that question to what I want it to say. Or if it's like, what's one important thing you learned in class? It's not actually class. It's in this meeting today. I could easily just... Um, click into that question and type what I want it to type. So when I'm looking at those forms and I'm going into that template, okay, these are ones, like I said, that are pre-built that you may be like, hey, I need you to fill this out and let me know what you think. Okay. Um, so maybe it's like your department is getting new shirts. Here's a, a t-shirt sign up that you can easily throw in that you're not having to do too much work because it's already built for you. So some of them are better than others. Most of the time, though, I usually just pick a blank form that I can just create myself. Okay. Another option is that um, there are Canyons forms. So like we have this adult learning feedback that is sent out anytime ISD does a professional development. So that's going to be right here that you could um, use that as well. If you have one that you want lots of people to be able to access and use within their departments or different things like that, you could sub also submit a template and it would go to one of us for approval. Usually that's not done because forms are usually pretty specific to what we're looking um, for for our specific needs, but it is possible if that's something you want to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to my forms. And right here, I can just go ahead and create a blank one. 
Okay, remember that I could do that from my CSD docs as well. So when I go into it to create my form, now I have my different pieces here. So up here on the right hand side are going to be any of the editing things that I want to do to my form. So um, for example, if I want to customize that form, so I'm Canyon's district, so purple doesn't really work for me. Maybe I want to create my own header and choose my own image. Okay, so I could come here and notice that there's a lot that are already there for me. So if I just want to make it pretty generic, I could go through and kind of choose. Or I could also upload an image. When I click here to click on upload, I can either drag or browse my files. So I have a Canyons District logo that I'm just going to click and drag into there. And so now it's here. So notice before my, my um, Google Form was purple. But as soon as I bring this in, notice the colors that are showing here on my logo. Now, when I click on done, my um, header is going to change and it's going to change the color of my form. So yellow is not really what I represent canyons with. So I could come here and say that I want my theme color instead of being yellow, maybe I want it to be that blue color. So now it's changing it to like a bluish gray and notice that my lines and things are blue. I could also change my background color to one of these three, but notice that everything it does, it automatically makes those colors um, format to look good. So if I wanted it just to be like a white or a cream color, I could turn it or I could move it however I want. Notice as well, my font style, I could have it exactly how it is right now, which is our basic, but if I wanted to make it more um, formal, I could do maybe a um, cursive font, or there's the formal font, or if I want to make it more fun, I could do that playful font. But know that when you're doing that, it's taking my text titles, but if I add like descriptions and stuff, that still stays with that basic font. So normally, I just don't even mess with that, and I just keep it that basic font for me. All right. Um, so other things that you would want to know is, um, so I just played with my customizing my theme. If I don't want that there anymore, I can just exit out of it. Right here is where we preview, and I'll show you that in just a second. But I want to take you up here to these settings really quickly. Under my settings, I'm going to have my general settings and my presentation settings. Quizzes is more for like a school setting, so I'm not going to mess with those. Um, but under general, if you would like to collect email addresses, basically what it means is that somebody would have to be signed in to be able to access your form. But once they're signed in, it would automatically collect their CSD docs email that is listed as they are completing the form. So if you don't want to have to have them sign in, okay, um, that collecting the email is probably not the best idea. Okay, right here is the requires a sign in. So if you are inside a Canyons district and you want to ensure that only people with inside of Canyons are filling out the form, you could require that sign in and turn it on there. Okay, limited responses means that they are able to respond one time. Okay, um, sometimes it needs to be a form that they're responding like weekly to or monthly, where maybe they're filling out, um, filling out a um, selection of whatever it is, okay? They could, you could come here and instead of having that limited, like it is checked right here, you could uncheck that to say that they can fill this out as often as they need to. So if maybe you're doing like a, um, an action where you're, you're trying to get people to um, fill out positive notes about other people in the department, okay? You could have this um, unchecked and then they could fill it out for maybe multiple people that are getting recognition within that department. Okay, another thing um, option is uh, respondents can edit after submission. I usually don't do that just because um, if I want them to, if they need to fill it out, I just have them fill it out again, but it's up to you. You could have them be able to edit after it. And I've never actually used this one where it's the summary charts and text responses where they're able to see those charts after they respond, but that is a possibility as well. 
Okay, under the presentation, presentation is what the form is going to look like when they're filling it out. So for most things that you're doing, you probably won't mess with this too much, but the one that I usually like to do is the show progress bar. Because if it's a longer form, they need to know, they it's good for them to know how far they are in that progress. So if it's like 10 questions and they're on question four, they're 40 percent done. It will show you that bar across the bottom of your screen, letting them know how far they're in. OK, um, this one right here is allowing them to, to submit another response. So like I said, if you want them to be able to respond more than one time, you can go ahead and after they hit submit, it will say, would you like to do another one? And they can click on it and it would open up another form for you. This confirmation message um, is, a, is really good to have. Um, so it will automatically, if you don't fill it in, just say, your response has been recorded. But maybe it's like, great, you filled out that form. Now I want you to blah, blah, blah. So you could say, um, thank, thank you for filling out the form. Please go to canyonsdistrict.org for more information or something like that. So you're able to personalize that for to fit your needs. All right. So I'm going to get out of that for just a second. And we're going to go into our forms. So, so far on our thing, we've gone through the template gallery. We've gone through themes and we've gone through our general and presentation settings. The next one we're going to go through is our um, creating question types. So these Google Forms are so simple to create. They can get complicated depending on what you want, but the basics of them is easy, and that's what I love about it. So notice right now, because it's untitled, it has nothing to it, Okay, it's showing it as a multiple choice question. But as soon as I start typing it in, maybe I want their name, and I click off of it, Notice now it automatically changed my question type to a short answer. So that way, I don't even have to come over here and select what type I want it to be. It's automatically filling it in. Now, if I want to say name, but I want to give them more information about it, I could say a description. Um, so that's where I could say first and last. Or maybe I want it to be last comma first. I could throw that in right there, and they're able to do it. Um, add that in. Um, a lot of the, a lot of times when you're trying to sort a lot of information, it's best to have their first name in one box and their last name in another box. So I would highly consider doing that. So maybe you're typing in first name here. Okay, that's a short answer. Now I could quickly come down here, and I could say I still want it to be. A short answer response because of what I'm doing and it's very similar to the question because I just want their last name so now I'm just going to duplicate that and instead of it being their first name it's going to be their last name so now when I go sort from our responses later on and I need to sort through it I can easily sort by either their first name or their last name because they're coming up in two separate columns okay um, other types of questions, so I can come over to my right-hand side. If I don't want to duplicate the question exactly, instead of duplicating, I can come over to the right-hand side over here, and I can add a question in. So now, when I'm looking here, I can see a lot of different responses. When I'm looking, multiple choice is going to be a type of question that has one answer. So my multiple choice um, would be something like um, maybe you're trying to do like top school preference. Okay, and you have like four choices um, elementary, middle, high school, or online. Okay, it has four choices that they can choose from. And so they're like, oh, I want it to be, I want to be elementary. They could click on elementary. Okay. Our other option would be if I did, actually, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to duplicate that again. Okay. Oh my gosh, let's go preference wrong. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so instead of it being like this, where they're picking one option, okay, another way is to do check boxes. So I could say instead, top school preferences. And then they would be able to check which ones interest them. So that maybe they want it to be elementary and middle. They could choose both of those if I do my check boxes. My other option is going to be a drop down. This is still allowing them to choose only one choice, but it's going to be, they're gonna click on it and then they can check, click which one they want. So let's go into our preview up on the top right hand side and now you'll be able to see those different choices. So here's my click, here's my checkbox. Okay, so this was multiple choice, this is checkbox, and here's my drop down. So now they're able to choose their drop down like that. All right, so in my preview, I can go ahead and exit out of it, or I can come down here and click back on my edit this form. But if I click on edit this form, it is going to bring me to another one. So now I have two different tabs open up here at the top. So just be aware of that because sometimes you do it and then all of a sudden you have 15 tabs open and you don't know why. All right. So when I'm creating that, okay, I just showed you your multiple choice check boxes and drop downs. Okay. The next options are more a little bit more complicated, but not like severe. So I can come here and I can add my next question. And I could do something like on a scale from one to five, tell me your comfort level of and whatever it is. Okay. Notice based on what I said, it was kind of creepy, but based on what I said, it automatically gave me a linear scale and it automatically put in a one to five. So I could say one is is um, not comfortable. And five is easy as pie. Okay, so now let me take you back to that preview. So now notice I've got my on a scale of one to five, tell me your comfort level of blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then they can go through and they can pick what selection they want it to be. Okay, so that is my linear scale. All right. Um, they, down here, okay, if I want to duplicate, I have already showed you that one, and that one's just right here. If I'm like, that is not what I want my question to look like, I just want to start over on it, I can always delete it. So one example of me deleting was the other day I was creating a um, form for Quell Hollow, and they asked me to make it, with a lot of sections and different questions that led up to it. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, that, that form is getting a little too complicated and it's going to take too long to fill out. So I was able to go through and just delete what I didn't need. Okay, so right here is the required. This is saying that they have to answer the question before they submit the form. So if I have that turned on, when I go to preview, okay, notice up here it changes this to Anything with the asterisk next to it is required. So technically on this form so far, they don't have to fill up anything but this last one. So if I fill out elementary right here and try to submit, it's going to tell me or tell the participant that they can't go on until they have answered that question. Once they've answered that question, now my submit button is will work and they'll be able to submit. So I would be very careful with what you have um, that you're forcing them to do versus not forcing them to do, because if you want it to be an anonymous survey, go ahead and leave that first and last name blank. But if you want it to be something that you're actually collecting their names, for example, you're doing that t-shirts, okay? If you don't have their first and last name in there and you have a size large, you won't know who that size large is going to. So make sure that you um, decide and put in the required if that is a necessary component of your of your form. All right, uh, the next one down is going to be a multiple choice grid. So that could be something as in 
Um, give me your, let's see, your preference. Oh my gosh, that is the hardest word to spell apparently. Of schools. And then here, I could do elementary. Middle, high, online, and then over here I could do one, two, three, and four. So now when I come to preview, I can they can say, well, elementary is my top choice, and then probably high school, and then I would do on oops, high school, then I would do online. And then middle school would be my last choice. So now they are able to, to put in order what they want. All right. So that is that one. Um, my last one that you probably would use would be this checkbox grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this one and change it to a checkbox grid because it's very similar to it, okay? Um, this one is making them do like a multiple choice type thing. This one is just letting them, so if they wanted to say that their top preference is, is one on all of them, or maybe you're having them do their comfort level of multiple things. So com comfort level of teaching high school, comfort level of teaching middle school, and they could say, I am comfortable teaching all of those, or I'm not as comfortable teaching whichever, okay? This is where this um, checkbox is going to come in handy. So if I preview it, they would be able to say, yep, I'm totally comfortable with this one and this one, and I'm okay with high school on that one and not so comfortable on online. So um, just another way of having them build that form. All right, so those are our choices. Um, another thing that you can do, let me create another question, is if you want them to say like the, um, to put in like a date preference. So what day would you prefer to get the vaccine? Or what day um, would you prefer an observation? You could have them put in the date that works for them. And notice that it automatically is going to come up with that calendar form that they could click on what day works for them. You can also do that same type of thing if you are doing it with time. So tell me what time works for you for this meeting or something like that. So if you're, you're having to meet with different people, you could send out this form and figure out what, what time in the day works best for them. And they could put their time. So what that would look like Okay. in my Google form is now I have a date that they're able to click on and say, yep, this day and then probably 9 a.m. And then they can submit their form to tell you what days and time is best for them. All right. So those are the different types of questions um, that you can look at here and you can also um, upload so if you have a google sheets presentation or a google sheet that has your questions built in you can do a file upload and it would um, bring questions in for you and you can do that right here as well that import questions um, but a lot of times to me it's easier just to copy and paste my questions in so that way i can make sure i have it exactly like i want it versus what they think it should be, and then it could mess up. All right, so right here, I have my first and last name. I could also put, have them put the email address if you wanted them to, but remember that I could, right here, have that force them to sign in, which would automatically put an email address on their Google form anyway. But that's just another way, because it's like, yeah, maybe they're using their, their CSD docs to log in, but maybe their preference is their Gmail account or their canyonsdistrict.org. So that could just um, create 
a spot that they're actually putting in the email address that they want to be um, that they that they use most often their preference. Okay, so the next thing is sections down here. So what could happen is I'm saying that my top preference is elementary. So what I could do is say, okay, well, based on, and I'm going to move this. Um, well, it's fine. Okay, so I said that my um, top preference is elementary. So I could have a section that is called elementary. And then what I could do is say, if they click on elementary in my three dots right here, they're going to go to a section based off of elementary. So, so continue to next section. I want to change that one to elementary. And then I could make a section for middle school and high school. And what's going to end up happening is now in elementary, I could easily move any questions. So, for example, in my, I'm going to delete this one really quickly. In my elementary section, now I'm going to have this question that says, based on you choosing elementary, now on a scale of one to five, tell me your comfort level for and maybe you're using uh, a program that they that they use often, like Lexia, okay? Because high school doesn't have Lexia, so they're not going to need to answer that question. But elementary does, so maybe you need them to answer a question based off of what they chose here. So now, if I go to my preview form, I have my first and last. If I have them click on elementary. Notice my next is going to take them to that elementary section. But if I have them click on middle school here, okay, my next is actually going to take them to the next section of that thing. Okay. So, and I have like a ton, like this one is continue to the next section. So it's which elementary was the next section. But if I had a third section that was um, middle school slash high school, then I could throw um, other questions under that section. So if they click on elementary, it would go to elementary. If they click the middle school or high school, then I could set those um, right here. I could set those to which one? I can't remember which one it was. Um, it was this one. Set these to say if they're middle school or high school, they're going to go to that middle school or high school, and that one is just going to continue to that next section. So depending on which one they choose depends on what section they're going to go to and which questions that they're going to answer. All right. I'm going to um, come here and just delete these extra sections for now just because it's going to be a little bit easier to see um, what happens with the responses. So now it's like, here's the form that I want them to fill out. Just make it really simple. When they come to pre um, preview now, I can have them fill out the form. Elementary, middle, and then they're going to submit that form. Okay, and I'm just going to do a couple of them. Okay, so I've got a few responses in there now. So now that I have responses in there that they've been submitted, okay, going to the next section, so I've created form sections. Um, I want, to, I'm going to come down here really quickly and view participant responses. So when I'm viewing those participant responses, notice right up here is my questions. And right over here is my responses. So now I can see 
who responded to what. So I can see the first names of the people responding. I can see the last names. I can see the school preferences. And I can see the, um, the other preferences. Okay. So when I'm looking at that, I can see it in its entirety. And that's what summary is. I could also go based off a question. So if I only wanted to look at this multiple choice question that we had of top school preference, I can come here and I can see um, those four questions. Okay, and it would have this the responses here. Okay. The other thing is maybe I want to look at it by respondent instead. That's when I would go over instead of looking at it by the question. I would look at it by the individual. So I could see that Chandra Marks responded to these questions this way. Okay, so that is just um, quickly how to, to look at it from inside of Google Forms. Now, personally, yes, the, the graphs are kind of nice and whatever, but I actually don't use those very often. What I ended up usually end up doing is coming up here to my Create Spreadsheet and I can create a spreadsheet, and I'm going to actually name my form really quickly, um, PDO, PD, okay? And so now when I create this spreadsheet, it's going to follow the same name, but it's going to say responses, and it's going to create it as a Google Sheet. So when I click here on create, it's going to open up. So here's where I was, here's my new tab, and now I have my responses here. So if I wanted to, now I could come in and say that I want to filter and I only want to see responses that Chandra did. And so here's my responses that Chandra did. Okay, or I can come here and say, nope, I actually want to see everybody's again and bring it back in. So now I'm able to see that those filters that are going on. Okay, so depending on what questions there are, I can go through and look at my responses this way. If I forced an email address, it's gonna show up right between the timestamp and the name. And I really like this timestamp because if you're, you say that you need um, something turned in by five o'clock on such and such a date, you can physically see that what time they turned it in to make sure that they got it turned in on time. Otherwise, um, it's like, Okay, well, I'm only going to look at stuff that is between these time frames, and you could just delete the rest of them or hide them. Okay, so that is on the responses. The next thing I want to show you is sending. So when I click on the send button, okay, if I want to send it out to the people I want to respond to it, okay, my respondents, I can come. And I can, um, I could email it, but to me, the easiest way to do it is by clicking on this link. And now I can click on my shortened URL and copy that in to my email to send that email. Okay. Another way to do it is maybe you want to put this form up on the school website or um, the department website. I could come right here and here's my embed code that I could copy. If I need it to be bigger than the size that it's showing, I could change those the height and width right here before I copy it. Okay, if I copy it and then change it, it's not going to make a difference. I actually have to change those first and then copy it, and then it will allow me to put those, embed those into my website. So if you're looking at embedding, I can help you more with that at a later time. But just know that that's where you do it. Okay, so that is if you are sending the form for people to fill it out. If you're sending out this form because you want someone to look it over and make sure that everything's right or maybe collaborate with you, instead of doing that from right here, you're actually going to come down here and add the collaborators. So what I could do here is now say that I want Danae to help me on this. And I can say, that I want her as an editor because she's going to be editing. Notice that's my only option there. Okay. And then I could send her a message if I want to to say, here it is. And I can send it. Okay. I can also come 
And if I only want them to be able to view or change whatever, I can go up into those settings right here. But usually if you are sending them a form to edit, you actually want them editing it. So just leave those the same. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to send it to them to fill out. And that, like I said, is going to be this link button right here. Okay. Um, I think the last thing that I was going to show you on here is this pre-filled link. And so basically what that means is when I am um, on my form, okay, I can go to the get pre-filled link and I could fill this out. Okay, Probably not the name, but maybe I could fill it out to say that elementary and middle school here and online right here. And then I could get this link. And basically, I can go ahead and copy the link down here. So when they, when you send it to that person to fill it out, I can automatically just share that link with them. And notice that these are already filled out for them. So if you're looking for volunteers for something, you could have a question that says, I would like to volunteer and you could automatically have it selected as yes. So they don't even have to click on it. It's automatically filled out for them. Okay. So again, let me show you how I got there. I'm just going to come into my editing form. I'm going to come on those three dots and I'm going to say get pre-filled link. And then fill out what I want to have filled out. And then I would go ahead and click on get link. It's going to copy that link right there. And now I can hyperlink it or paste it into the email that I want to send it to or whoever I want to send it to, I can send it. Okay, so those are the basics of Google Forms. Does anyone have any questions? I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. No questions? Okay, well then that is all I have today. But if you have any questions that you want answered about Google Forms or any of the other PDs that we've done so far, please just let me know and I would be happy to set up a time to meet with you. Have a great day, everybody.